Hello. Um, so, I'm Simon, and, and I'm, I'm Nicola. Hi. And we're going to show you a meetup later uh, in the next 20 minutes. So, we need fonts. We are all using typography in a, as a way to distinguish from each other. Uh, people are using typefaces to show who they are, their identities, uh, their culture, background, and nationalities. Mm -hmm. And to, today, these people need a font that can custom design it for themselves, the business. And Melapalata would allow anybody, like from children to professional type designer, to create unique typefaces within large f uh, range of families, just like the universe. Um, so, so we came up with the idea of what's the already existing tools to create, um, I mean, to extend fam font family. Um, and we came up with the fact that while actual tools allow, allow us to interact only with uh, outlines by mixing from one to one font, like with, uh, for instance, Superpolator or such tools, Metapolator, Metapolator sorry, would explore the initial definition of the letters, which is a skeleton. So, so how does it... How does this work? Um, we need tools. Um, type, designer, uh, type designers need to, uh, a toolbox to build a single typeface out into a family of styles. Um, and Metapolator provides this initial set of tools. So we, we have uh, spacing, uh, changing weight, changing width, changing X height, or other any uh, uh, vertical um, uh, metrics. Uh, type designers need a tool that snap into their existing workflow, so we can load any existing font. Um, we are using the text-based and interchangeable UFO source format, which has become a standard in the, the font industry. Um, the, the curve and parameter calculation we're using is based on Metafont, Another standard uh, since the 70s in mathematical typesetting and the tech and latex environment. And as a web application, Metapolator is also built with another standard with AngularJS. So yeah, what's the super family? Um, so I guess you already know, but it's um, something we come up with the computer ages. Uh, it's um, more like a font family, which um, um, composed with bold, regular, light, condensed, like every sort of font possible, even serif. So, should we talk about it? Uh, so, when, when I met um, Dave Prosland at uh, last year's LGM in Madrid, um, we discussed the idea to use um, Metafont uh, for a new kind of uh, font editor, and he asked me to come up with an entire font family with uh, 10, 10 uh, different weights. And so, how would it be possible for me to do this within two months? Because normally, you use these two months for one single cut, uh, if you would do it traditionally. Um, so, I needed a tool who would help me to achieve this, such a task. I knew Metafont from my former project, uh, metaflop.com, where we already proved um, a web-based user interface for Metafont, and where we illustrated also the power of parametric um, type design. And I also knew Metafont from this uh, very first project I did at school. was trying to turn uh, the Paul Renner plaque font into a Metafont, so I can generate my home uh, regular, light, bold, or whatever um, cut. And um, it was possible thanks to uh, Simon as well. And from these very two beginning ideas, we uh, come up with the, the idea to, to draw like a skeleton from, uh, from the UFO file. Um, yeah, this is a, like a snapshot where you can ex it's, ex it's explained that the stroke goes from one point to one point using tension curve, and uh, that's, that's the main idea of the skeleton of the letter. So, uh, what is a parameter? Uh, everything can be a parameter. We uh, can def define this person here, Nicholas, um, and apply a parameter arm, and by increasing the value of arm, 
Yeah. yeah. Um, so a typeface can also be seen as a system made out of parts, and therefore these parts can be parameterized. Uh, we added more and more parameters uh, to, to the code, and it got more and more complicated. Donald Knuth's uh, Computer Modern has 62 parameters you can define. It's a fantastic um, example of parameterized fonts. But one of the failure of Computer Modern, it was too complex and intricate. So we had approached exactly the same problem. As soon as we wanted to add a new parameter, it would affect the former one. And so we had to switch on and off certain functions for certain parameters, which made it even more complicated. So how, how is it possible to keep a clear view of a parameterized letter shape? And we came up with the solution to make a clone of the original Metafont and only add a very specific parameter for each. And then instead of constantly turning on and off parameter values for one single font, we def defined a set for two fonts and invented the metapolation parameter, which would simply travel in between the set of font A and font B. The next slide, yeah. 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 We come up with the idea because some production tools already use this um, this notion, like uh, for instance the mix table in the, um, in DJing um, music uh, field, or even synthesizer. Like you you go from one to B to different presets, but you can mix uh, in between. So I have to turn to others. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we we could now duplicate our master font and metapolate within different clones. To create new fonts with specific, with other specific, specific features, and yeah, in the, also in the early um, prototype and in interface, we had uh, like the turntable, a left and a right, and in the middle, our instance. Mm -hmm. To program a meta font, it takes approximately the same time as to draw a font by hand. Of course, we can play around later with these parameters, but who knows what the results will be. For, for instance, on the next slide, yeah, which one is the programming version and which one is the original version of the font? There was no difference. So we believe type design should always be in the hand of the designer. Metapolator is not drawing you a shape out of nothing. Uh, we can think of fonts in Metapolator as a collection of parts, and we want to bring them alive. Uh, thanks to Frank uh, for this uh, extra added P. Um, can you kill? Yeah. Ah, and we can say that uh, Metapolator is not the P itself, but the, the man uh, with the hat in his hands, like putting parts together. Um, yeah, typeface is a system of um, of shapes and terms which are inherited from uh, history, Th but they can be all set as parameters. Every um, every uh, every term which are in white can be turned into parameters, actually. Because um, uh, yeah, it, it's 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 also also interesting is in this process because we come back to the um, skeleton idea like. Um, First, we, when we do a letter, we had stick on, in the sand, drawing letters. Then we, had, we, was, we were writing on the works, then on paper, then on portion papers. But it was always using like the skeleton thing and uh, with the with the nib, it was making the outline and everything. But then when we went to the um, type um, metal, metal type edges, we went to an outline. Um, we were not using any uh, any more the skeleton, but. We wanted to come back to this idea of skeleton. I, I hope I'm clear enough for you. So control points and uh, and therefore outlines and skeletons can be accessed and interpolated in Metapolator, same as composites, anchor points, and kerning values. Yeah, uh, can you go back on this? Yeah. Gosh. Like yeah, on, on the left is actual uh, curve um, outline curves. But on the on the right side is um, like you have the skeleton and the outline made out made out of the of the skeleton, which, is, which can be parameted. 
So here we used uh, Pablo Impolari's encode and interpolated his original files with our new um, command line tool, which, uh, or to prove the accuracy in our interpol interpolation calculation. And for this one, we only used uh, control points. Control points. But if we instead read the points of an outline in pairs, means always left and right, uh, left and the right point, then we have control over the stroke and skeleton, means we don't need to define control points. Tablets are now nowadays they only use outline uh, shapes, so it, it can be relevant and useful to make components and move them around. But now it, it will be uh, like the skeleton, which is the component itself. So now we have total control over the shapes and can easily change, for example, the excite of an existing font by just changing one parameter. Like, like, like you can see here, the, um, the, two version, the two differences, like on the, the grayish one is the, the one using the skeleton and the, on the white one is using the um, outline version. Well, the white one is just stretched without... Yeah, um, it's just stretched. Yeah. So now let's combine the two methods of control points and pen strokes. If we look at this G, we can select only the tail. And we already uh, have pairs and the extremas. And a pen point can be um, a center point and the left and right. We can also change the curvature of that tail. <coughs> Uh, but let's start again and show a typical workflow within Metaflow Polator from beginning. Let's say you draw um, a font in your sketchbook, and then you digitalize it, digitize, digitize it. Sorry, so, and you uh, always take care to have two um, left and right points of your skeletons. Then you do, you draw your skeleton in a way, and you can add the parameters to uh, to explain what the curves are and the top points and. Um, Every parameter, actually. The metrics? So far, our font only knows the, uh, the stroke width, glyph width, vertical metrics, uh, like excite ascender, etc., uh, which is already quite a lot. But if you might want to change uh, um, like other, other stuff, like directions or, or the curvatures, you need to tag uh, specific uh, parameters. So we can create a, a whole f typeface within uh, with different weights, uh, weights and styles. Like the regular, the bold, bold, condensed, like high contrast version, um, con like condensation, thin, and with the um, lower excite, with serif, and so on. So how can we get one font into a whole family? It's two minutes. Uh, when we start using one single font, we can extrapolate to a second replica by cal calculating a skeleton from the glyph outline. From that skeleton to uh, the original outline, we can create new inter and extrapolations. So we create new instances from masters. An instance is the position between two or many new masters. We can create new masters from, any, uh, from an instance any time. And so, um, but please, Simon, can you show us how to get a, a tag point in Metabolism, please? <laughs> yes. How do so, you achieve such a task? Uh, so here we see okay. um, our latest um, uh, user, interf uh, user interface for uh, Metabolator. And uh, you can see how you just click on, on one of these pair points and assign a parameter. In this case, it's mm -hmm. ascender. And if you change the global parameter ascender, you change uh, that one of the B, as well of all of the others. So you have the full control on everything? Yeah. Just like uh, modular synthesizers, for instance, from that fair. So um, the, the modular, modular design of Metapolitical allows uh, to add um, unlimited amount of access and masters to, to create very uh, complex interpolation environments. So... Um, Can you see something? Yeah, this is a very minimal setup of only two axes. 
but we, we could also um, recreate um, uh, design spaces such as the north side cube. So we know already that interpolating um, in metapolator is, is accurate, but what about these metaphone curves? <laughs> Uh, so Metafon is drawing curves also based on Bezier algorithm, but it comes with some handy tools. For example, if you describe curve retention, we don't need to worry about the control points and curves. So we can... Uh, yeah. You can also say, let's say that we want to have two different uh, uh, outline curve, like the left side is still a cycle, but uh, the inner, inner curve can be uh, like a straight line, changing the tension. Oh. That's a really cool thing. So uh, we did a uh, Pepsi challenge test and with the cabin. We took cabin, another front from Pablo, and redrew its curves in Metapolite only using pen stroke and tension. So which uh, w w which one is uh, the one made with Metapolite, for instance? Actually, it's the one at the bottom. The one lower is the one with is the Metapolite. Actually, I can't tell. I don't remember. <laughs> So judged by the font design community, it was first very hard to make a difference, and second, uh, the meta font copy was kind of more precise and sleek. So if this was also the intention of the original, I don't know, but adding irregularity is also something meta font is very cap capable of. This is um, uh, from letter letter or yeah, um, Beowulf. Okay. 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 Uh, so we we tried the same with um, meta -pilata. And not not uh, not uh, affecting the outline of the shape of the letter, but the um, the, um, the the skeleton. So um, the effect is is um, is both on both uh, outline, you know. So it's always in a way true. But affecting the outline is something pretty bad, but affecting the, the skeleton is pretty awesome. So can we par parameterize the garment? Yes, we can, but. Uh, Maybe this, this very last slide. Yeah. yeah. So here, here we used uh, EB Garment for another experiment, and for this typeface called Sean, we didn't we didn't even use outlines, only a certain pair of points, uh, which were often often at the extreme as in the original Garment. So to our surprise, the rendered chi on on the right was quite beautiful, which yeah. has mainly to do with the proportion, uh, good proportion of the original Garment. And then we changed some, some parameters, parameters yeah. like excite. Uh, the lower case, eh? Yeah. And the first version uh, has nine, nine weights illustrated with number P on the right. Although it's not uh, fine tuned yet, it shows uh, already a, a pleasant reading and legibility. And then we tested EXO from Nathaniel Gamma in Metapolator. So I changed the drag, draw commands for the control points. Instead of using the Bessie algorithms, I, I choose uh, straight lines. It ended up with uh, totally different cuts. Yeah. So we can think a lot, of, lot more of such uh, special effects like rounded corners, outlines, engraved effects. And also here, the effect is traveling on the skeleton of the letters. And then we can show um, like a preview of the uh, interface, how it will look. So this is uh, the specimen car, because if you if you use Metapolator, you, you come up with hundreds of, of fonts, and you, you, you have to uh, deal with them and compare them, and also be able to, to edit them on location and, 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 and recompare it. So how can Metapolator be used in the real world? Yeah, you can, you can imagine how you want to, uh, to design a, um, a font, starting by creating a lot of different ends, lowercase n, and you can pr um, prepare a lot of uh, different combinations and explore them. Or it's extend family or whatever. Or you, you want. can uh, if, if, on this project I, I, I did for a fashion Identity, brand in yeah. New York. Uh, I created a, a typeface out of a logo, and I used Metapolator to make sure all the curves are consist consistent within within the, the glyphs. And you can extend them. Yeah. You can easily uh, yeah, adjust. So. Um,